is Magic the Gathering making enough money? This is a question that I want to answer based on a recent article and a tweet that came out that's got everyone's feathers ruffled. It, it proposes some numbers to other comparable games out there, uh, such as Pokemon TCG Live and Yu-Gi-Oh! And I wanted to talk about these numbers and if this spells a good future for Magic and if potentially some of these numbers being taken out of context. I'm here to provide you with that information. So my thoughts on the future of the game as a whole. Now, I've been doing a lot more of these long form style videos on the channel. If you like what you're seeing, I highly encourage you to leave a like on the video and also comment down below how I can improve these and maybe your general thoughts on the content. If you want to see more, including some gameplay, I highly recommend subscribing as well. Now, this discussion stems from a tweet from Trust Your Pilot stating that Marvel Snap has made over $100 million in revenue with more than 22 million downloads. Yu-Gi-Oh! is at 55 million, Magic Arena is at 19 million, and Hearthstone is at 18 million. Pokemon TCG Live is at zero dollars. Now, these numbers are important because you need to understand the context that they're from, but also I think the, uh, the high number, I should say, of this revenue that's coming from Marvel Snap is also important to understand and compare that to Magic in general and see where Magic could potentially improve some of its product offerings and, and just understand how different TCGs are doing as well. Now the Pokemon TCG Live bit at zero dollars is actually important to note as well. And thankfully Pleasant Kenobi addresses this and I, I have very limited knowledge of Pokemon, I will admit. I do however know that recently they did earlier this year sunset their old kind of magic online equivalent. They had a online version to play um, and they did sunset that for Pokemon TCG Live and Pleasant Kenobi clarifies um, that you cannot make money on it uh, at all. You cannot put money into it. Um, and it's a companion in the truest sense uh, to the product to play. And so this is something to note, especially because, you know, it's, it's the last thing stated. It's kind of like this hammer statement taken a little bit out of context. And I think you're going to see that as a common theme as we move throughout this video and talk about some of the other figures that are listed here. But let's go to the article itself. Marvel Snap becomes the top grossing digital trading card game, beating Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic the Gathering Arena. Now, it's important to understand what this means when you talk about the key facts. So Marvel Snap, mobile and PC playable collectible trading card game. As someone who's personally been playing the game for almost a year, ever since its October release, uh, the game is so fun to play. And I actually, you know, for being a mobile TCG, primarily when it first came out, it had a PC client, but recently had a full PC release. So it has its own now PC UI. Instead, what it used to do was just mirror the mobile client on Steam. The game is really fun, and we're going to talk more about that in a second, which helps to understand why it's 22 million times uh, that it's been downloaded, mostly because honestly, it has the Marvel IP. Magic itself has to work itself as probably the most well-known trading card game out there since the early 90s. And so it's been that hallmark piece and has led to innovations of other trading card games. And so, you know, Marvel Snap wouldn't be here without Magic's success. So that's nothing to note. But we can take some of the successful factors of Marvel Snap, talk about its mechanics, and then use that as a frame of reference to where we're getting these numbers from Magic Arena and what that could actually mean for Magic moving forward. Now, Marvel Snap, mobile game of the year at the dice awards it's played everywhere many of the viewers of this video you're probably already playing marvel snap as mentioned i've been an avid player uh, right now as of the recording this video the loki season is taking over the marvel snap meta and it's nice because the cards that are being released kind of coincide with other marvel releases as well as i just mentioned loki season two um kind of just being hyped up right now uh it's the loki season so you get cards related to ips and characters that you are familiar with through the marvel cinematic universe the marvel comics or however else you engage with the ip the game no doubt is famous because of its ip one that has already been built for it and largely the hype around the game ben bro the designer has recently talked about how it's nice that you know the content and the hype for your game is built around by other people the movie directors the writers um and the tv shows and whatever else that is bringing people into marvel snap now a lot of people are playing this we get it now that you the reason people are playing it is if you look at the kind of how to play 
the big tout for it is that you know short three to five minute games many magic players have played games that have lasted 50 plus minutes if you're playing commander two to three hour commander games for those of you real masochists out there playing five plus player commander pods y'all are crazy okay or four uh you know yeah five plus four is fine but you can imagine how long games go and in competitive uh, rel you have clocks so on mtgo you have chess clocks where each player has 25 minutes to play around uh play their game but in total in a paper setting you have 50 in total so games are long Marvel Snap in comparison, as I just mentioned, three to five minute games, very short in and out. And you can see how that's attractive as a mobile card game. You get your cards in and what you're essentially trying to do, if you look at the screen right now, you have three different locations that have different abilities. You have to just have a higher number than your opponent by the end of the game. So you can see how uh, the player here has played Ant-Man. They have one. If the game ends here, the player with the one wins because they have more power in total they're winning more locations they have more power at those locations that's it the cards are different abilities they increase those they have different synergies blah 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 very simple to understand whereas magic is relatively complicated but again magic has allowed its complexity to attract players there's a lot of onus and power that each player has to enact their own game plan play different formats and just express themselves in many different ways whereas marvel you're kind of uh constricted to the characters that you have and very limited in a three to five minute game to do what you want to do but still the mechanics are interesting in that fashion but being mobile is a big part of its not only gameplay but user experience and that's a whole other way that we can discuss this whole revenue model that this article wants to touch base on being mobile you're stuck on a 9 by 16 ratio and so this ratio limits the way the store is viewed where you go into buy your cards, buy your external currencies, buy your packs in, in the case of uh, Magic Arena. And so if you look at the store UI, it's pretty kind of well laid out. This is a little bit of an outdated image, but you can scroll down. You have different subsections at the top where you can buy new variants of cards so new artwork. You can buy your currencies. You can buy the hot deals, whatever it might be. Very smooth laid out that you can go up and down from very logical, similar, similar to how TikTok scrolls right now, where you go up and down and you swipe left and right just to go into profile. So if you go that extra step, you swipe uh, left and right. But generally speaking to how mobile operates, you go up and down. But Magic Arena, in that case on its mobile client, you go side to side. So you already have this downside of user experience stopping your uh, really ability to do things efficiently. You have to turn your phone sideways, which means you're holding it with two hands. You're more involved with this. You can't just casually, you know, do it, you know, with a coffee in one hand and, you know, the mobile game in the other. You have to be involved with it. And so the user experience part of Magic Arena on mobile is a big reason why a lot of people may not be playing this. You have to have a relatively powerful phone. It heats up your phone a lot. It takes a lot of effort to do this. And you actually require a pretty decent internet connection to get a lot of the animations through and play a lot of the games. You can imagine in a user experience that looks like this, it's pretty tough when you compare it to uh, something like Marvel Snap that again, you can do on one phone, whereas you require two and everything's scrunched together. But then on the PC version of it, it's something expanded. It's a lot more accessible. And this is really what I wanna hammer home. You'll notice that the last couple of minutes I've been talking about mobile only. And that's where the numbers are construed to. That article is primarily talking about mobile games and that figure of, well, 19 million that has been talking about 20 million almost from Magic Arena is specifically from its mobile client. And what I wanted to highlight here is that the reason that Marvel Stop is beating Magic Arena is because this is in mobile numbers. Magic Arena isn't really an accessible game on the mobile platform. It's not, re in my opinion, from what I've shown here, it's not really accessible, it's not intuitive, and there's a lot of complicated things happening on the battlefield in a long form game that doesn't really lend itself to be playing on a mobile setting, maybe on the commute to work or something short, a break in between, maybe projects that you're doing at work, whatever it might be doesn't lend itself to that, whereas Marvel Snap does. So stating numbers like this isn't really helpful to the cause of magic. And honestly, speaking facts, magic is doing just fine. We don't have the numbers for magic uh, arena in general on pc we can get relative player numbers now that it's on steam as you'll see uh launched on steam earlier this year with mixed reviews but you can get it innately from the wizards of the client launcher or you can get it through steam and stuff like this is great in terms of accessibility a lot of people have 
big Steam libraries and having Magic Arena all in one through your Steam wallets. Maybe, you know, you get Steam cards or Steam gift cards from your loved ones or fr uh, friends and whoever it might be. And so having that all in one ecosystem is really nice for something like Magic Arena. And we can get player numbers from this as well. And it's important to get things like this and have this accessibility. And Magic has that. And recently, Marvel Slap has had to do that, as I mentioned, by launching a PC version, which it didn't really have before. It wasn't necessarily that accessible for PC players, although the UI did look nice. Magic Arena has a really robust, great PC user experience, in my opinion. It looks great. The animations are great. And as the recording, in this video i believe they recently changed some animations as well such as pack openings and different legendaries coming onto the battlefield there's a lot of things to love that's coming to arena and that leads me into my discussion about the future the future of arena as announced in gen con from this article on the mtg arena zone we have a great you know, duplicate protection system coming up, new achievement system. Before the end of the year, we're gonna have Khans Tarkir being released as a full set, not a remastered version. So are we gonna get fetch lands on Arena? That's gonna be crazy for Historic. And then finally, no more uh, MTG Arena remaster sets after this, but this is gonna be huge because we're also going to get a kind of integration between uh, something that this article touches on as well. We're also gonna get an integration between paper play and going to FNM, going to your seal pre-release and playing Magic Arena. So now, similar to how Pokemon has done it for years where you buy packs and you can translate those onto the digital client, we're now gonna get a closer one-to-one -to -one towards the gathering and the magic. The magic that you see online, that you see in paper, the magic that you see online is gonna be closer linked to the gathering that you see in paper and sometimes digitally as well through stuff like spell table but specifically we're gonna get finally the thing that people have wanted on arena the big reason that people have been coming on to it and keeping slow track keeping the updates going pioneer tournament pioneer on arena by the end of 2024 and this is going to be facilitated with that cons of tarkir set release and so tournament pioneer is very specific it's not going to be the whole pioneer legality but it's going to provide you with the base level strategies that allow you to play pioneer it's going to give you all the cards that you need to generally play a tournament viable pioneer deck and all different types from the meta so this is going to be really important and obviously we're going to get the ongoing set releases of the current standard set so pioneer Pioneer is going to be able to keep up from there. So again, Magic Arena accessible on Steam, on its client, working towards the Pioneer legality, working towards helping those that love competitive REL, introducing new sets, increasing animations and accessibility, and generally allowing the user experience to grow. And so Magic in general is doing well. It's making enough money. And this article itself, in my opinion, is just misconstruing data. It wants to be positive towards the whole you know, Marvel snap boom that's been going on. But it's important to understand the magic is going nowhere. Magic is doing a lot. And as we saw from this Gen Con announcement, we have a roadmap for the next two to three years. 2024 is gonna be huge with Modern Horizons 3, Fallout, Assassin's Creed. And then down the line in 25 and 26, we have Enistrad Remastered and Final Fantasy coming down the line. We have a space opera set, Magic in space. We're gonna get spaceships as vehicles. And a lot of people have continued Contentious opinions about that and that's fine that's for a discussion for another video but as i want to highlight magic is doing fine it's making enough money and some of the numbers that you're seeing online really need to be researched a bit more for you to better understand that eh, they're being taken out of context and being misconstrued now what do you think about the topic of this video do you think magic is making enough money do you think magic is still doing not great user experience things to take this money from us consumers and how do you think magic can improve its money making modalities online and in paper uh, to increase the experience for yourself as a player um, and for myself as a player i have my own methods um that i think they, they could use but that's a whole other video i'm just trying to you know quell the flames here and let you all understand that the game that you love is doing just fine